Our project will explore how a standard bicycle turns and steers. As Harry rides through our campus on a nice Saturday morning, we will briefly summarize the points that will be explained in detail later on. This video will address the basics on bicycle engineering using topics derived from our lectures. The three main components that allow a bike to both steer and stay balanced are the location of the steering axis, the distribution of the bicycle's weight, and the gyroscopic precession of the front wheel. In order to understand these concepts, one must first understand how displacing the center of mass while riding a bike affects the motion of the bike. When riding a bike, both the balance and steering are dependent on the bike's center of mass. When you turn the handlebars, this does not cause the bike to turn. It causes the wheel to go out from under the center of mass, which then causes the bike to lean to one side. When the bike leans, it automatically turns to that side as well, and the wheel returns to being under the center of mass and keeps the bike balanced. For example, if you turn the handlebars to the left, the wheel goes to the left and moves out from underneath you. The force of the ground on the bike is now angled to the right and therefore causes the bike to turn to the right. This is what makes it possible to ride a bike without holding on to the handlebars. To turn, you can simply lean. This leaning factor can also be seen as Kayla rides a bike and the level of the camera frame tilts from side to side as she maintains balance. This tendency for the front wheel to regain its position underneath the center of mass is due to the three components of a bike's physics mentioned earlier. The steering axis of a bike has a backwards slant. The front wheel of the bike touches the ground a little bit behind this axis. This idea is visualized more clearly while riding along the line of a parking lot. When the bike leans to the right, the force from the ground on the bike causes the wheel and the handlebars of the bike to turn to the right as well. This helps the bike to regain the wheel's position back under the center of mass. The second factor is that the manufacturer of the bike usually takes the weight of the front wheel and the handlebars and distributes it a little bit in front of the steering axis. So when the bike leans to the right, the downward force of that mass causes the wheel and handlebars to turn to the right as well. The third component is the gyroscopic precession of the front wheel. Trying to tilt a spinning object makes the object tilt as if you push the object at a point that is 90 degrees away from where you did. If a gyroscopic precession were applied to the leaning of the bike from earlier, the turning of the handlebars would occur much more easily. The gyroscopic precession of the bike's front wheel during a leftward lean makes the front wheel turn to the left. Like we explained earlier, this causes the bike to realign its wheels under the center of mass. It is a common misconception that the simple forward motion of a bike somehow magically keeps it balanced. In reality, if the bike is moving too slowly, it will not be able to turn quickly enough to realign its wheels under its center of mass. All of these factors work together to steer and balance a bicycle, and none individually will work without the others. In summary, a standard bicycle is able to steer and remain balanced because the front wheel touches the ground behind a backwards slanted steering axis, the weight distribution of the front wheel and handlebars having a center of mass being in front of the steering axis, and the gyroscopic procession of the front wheel.